I believe that the pursuit of authenticity is the core of my music. I like to think that there are two kinds of Shabirs, the commercial Shabir and the independent Shabir. However, neither Shabir is actually authentic. What is truly authentic is the synthesis of both. I never thought that I would become like a star. You know, I won a competition in 2005, a singing competition uh, called Vasandam Star, which is a national, you know, singing competition for Tamil. And uh, after winning it, it kind of uh, propelled me into the scene very quickly. I wasn't ready for it, but it propelled me. The most important thing that it did to me is that it forced me to evolve. It taught me that there is no more time you're here already, and then from there I go. But when I went to India, it was interesting because um, none of this mattered in India. Going to India was like starting from scratch. So when I first started making inroads into Chennai, I knew that that is the hinterland if you're making Tamil music. And I can't be in Singapore you know, doing that because I have to find my audience there because there's just so much you can do in Singapore. I see it as an expansion, not a migration. Anyone can enter the industry if they have talent. Uh, foreign or not, secondary concern. But if you've got talent, they want you. And that's the beauty about the, you know, industry in India. But whenever I'm exhausted, I come back to Singapore to refill. After all, my roots are here, right? So when I was growing up as a teenager, um, like early childhood was a lot of invisibility. And then, you know, I got bullied for a very long time. And then to get out of that bullying, I started becoming very violent and aggressive. Music was an outlet, which I found a, a, a more positive uh, way to channel all that energy out, you know. I had a band and we wrote songs. I wrote my first song when I was like from 12 going 13. I don't know whether you want to call it fusion or cacophony, but basically it's, it's a mix of everything. I would trace my, my, my artist DNA to that band. Like really in this world, really doing something, like putting songs out, it, it started with that band. So when it comes to scoring for film, it's an exercise of wills. It's about the director's vision. We're always trying to serve the story and put our interest behind. For an example, in this particular, you know, film. I always loved you. It tells you what the characters are feeling in that moment. So I'm helping to tell the story, but in a more literal sense. But if you leave it to me, then me as an independent artist, I would want to explore my fragilities and my vulnerabilities and myself through the process of telling the story and through the score. So I'm working on this track called Koro Koro and it's from my upcoming Lockdown EP. The song is about how we as human society put profit before pandemic preparedness. So Koro Koro, I started working on the track when the entire world was under some form of lockdown due to the pandemic. And it kind of forced me to think out of the box and you know push my boundaries. I didn't have the keyboard, I didn't have musicians. This was new. So I resorted to a lot of sampling with the track. The song starts off with these uh, ominous keyboard sounds. And then I introduce elements of experimental hip hop. And there's a trumpet line. Tribal chants, religious sounds. So much going on. And then we close the song with the sound of a rooster, which symbolizes awakening. The track is asking the human society to wake up from its sleep. You know, it's asking why do we do the things that we did to end up here. And then it's also looking at the future and asking us questions about what are we going to do from now on. And this is the first time I write a song like that. It's both limiting and liberating. Living itself constantly like pushes me to say something because I'm always experiencing something. And I cannot do it by telling other people's stories and singing other people's songs. I haven't said everything yet from the past. There are some things which I hide. And then there's the present. Life is also happening right now. And all these things, you know, the channel is the music. Karl Marx said that, you know, last words are for people who have not said enough. Yeah, I want to say enough. Get the fuck out of the way.
For me, a lot has changed in my life and my career. But one thing which I see as a constant, and it's not changed, is the will to be authentic. Like my first song, it's got the word slipper in it, in a Tamar uh, Serupu. We don't write that into songs. That's not poetic. That's not very lyrical. But that's the naive, you know, dumb 12 year old in me who wrote that. But I won't change that. And I will keep it the way it is because it teaches me what I was and the journey that I've traveled, you know, to come here. And I think that was authentic to 12 year old Shabir. I appreciate him and I accept him. That's the only way I can grow. I'm not going